Hello and welcome to the Dota 2 Asia Championship 2015 here on Hefla TV 1. This is going to be a best of two series between Myth Trust and Can't Say Whips. I'm Grandis V and I'll be joined by Black Adder. Throughout the duration of this series and the ones to follow right here, we're just trying to cover all of the games and making sure that there is some Twitch coverage for all of this amazing Dota and it should be a pretty interesting show. Indeed it should be and honestly, I'm looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to the DAC for a while now. I mean, these teams, well, we're in for a show. Myth Trust I've been casting for God knows how long. They're, they're for as long as I've been casting, I think. They are a solid bunch of guys, and I think we've cast them countless times in the last few months on, on Hefler TV. And can't say whoops. Well, I'm looking forward to them. They tend to be a bit more aggressive than normal. <laughs> Definitely. I don't get the pleasure of casting these teams very often, mostly because of the time zone I'm in. But whenever I do, it's always somewhat of a treat. So we'll just have to see how these teams are going to approach the game. And we're going to start things off with this draft. Early Tidehunter pick coming out from Can't Say Whips. No big surprises there. And the Brewmaster first pick from Myth Trust. As it stands, nothing too out of the ordinary. And just going to see some pretty big mid game team fight ultimates. It does sort of surprise me we see the Brewmaster. A lot of teams have sort of shied away from him after the nerf he got, and he did get the triple nerf stick. I mean, it, it hurt Brewmaster. So seeing him picked up as a first pick after a tight hunter, that actually greatly surprises me here. Yeah, we'll have to see. It's still a really solid hero, and Split's never really going to be a bad option to have on your team. Myth Trust, I wouldn't be surprised to see them second pick up the Scarath Mage just to ensure Brewmaster's time a little bit, but it does leave you open. To getting countered pretty darn hard for the Brew, the enemy team has a lot of different options and routes to kind of work around him. The Scarf Mage is going to picked up by Can't Say Whips, but the second pick to Anti Mage, very peculiar coming out from Myth Trust. They're going to get a very hard late gamer already in this draft. Hmm. I suppose the Brewmaster Anti Mage opener, if you get a Scarf Mage into that, it's sort of necessary to deal with the Brewmaster with Ancient Seal or something along that line. And Anti Mage can quite heavily punish a Skyrath Mage. Skyrath Mage is basically a walking bomb to an anti-mage, so there is some logic behind it, but still it's a very pick up, uh, very early pickup of anti-mage, and it's quite the odd opening from Mythtrust, but then again, Mythtrust can be very aggressive themselves, so we shall see what they do here. Definitely. It is some sort of counter synergy as well, just having an instant disable up against anti-mage and a large amount of burst. Even though Spell Shield's going to be negating a little bit of that, it's still really nice to have just the Ancient Seal, and the Amplification somewhat gets around the Spell Shield damage block. Can't say whips. Are going to be faced with the next couple bands, and I expect a lot of supports to see some hate. In particular with Vengeful Spirit, which hasn't been touched as of yet, would be a really nice pickup for both sides to be honest, but especially for Myth Trust defensively up against Scarth Mage Ultimate, and boosting the damage of Anti Mage and opening up possibilities for an early Roshan. Personally, I think uh, there'll be a Shadow Demon ban. It's effective for both sides here, be it defensively for Myth Trust or offensively for Can't Say Whips. The Shadow Demon up against an Anti-Mage, being able to burn the Anti-Mage's man themselves, that's quite the nice way to deal with them. And Sky Shadow Demon, Skyrath Mage, is still a very powerful support combo, especially with the amplification it can bring. So there is going to be support hate, and I expect a ban on the Shadow Demon more than most. Then again, Dazzle is another thing that has to be considered. Give the Anti-Mage Shadow Grave, and you're going to have a very, very hard time killing him. Definitely. Well, we'll have to see how both of these teams are going to approach. We're going to see the Vengeful Spirit banned out by Can't Say Whips. And, as you said, I wouldn't be surprised about the Shadow Demon ban if it does come out for them. Mythos right now, the only core that they have left to fill is the offlane position. If they want to just go right off of the bat, Batrider is right there for the taking. Although, I just expect them to snag up one of those supports. Uh, Batrider, I suppose, would fit, although that would feel very TI2 era of draft. I mean, Batrider, Anti-Mage, Brew? Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite the TI2 kind of lineup. I, I expect them to pick up their supports here and leave their off lane open so they can change as they need, because what fits right now? A Clockwork, a Centaur, both of these could work out quite nicely, but they don't know about the rest of the draft yet, so picking up the supports to get behind the Brewmaster Anti-Mage seems to be the right order of business, and that will be what they're up to. Ogre Magi are going to be the pickup for Myth Trust, and I'm wondering what they're going to combo this with, because as I said, the Dazzle is there, the Shadow Demon is there. Both are pretty good combinations with the Ogre. The Ogre's downside here, though, is he's melee. I mean, I wouldn't particularly want to be a Ogre up against a Skywrath Mage, per se, if it is a Tri-V-Tri -tri kind of scenario. 
Yeah, definitely. He is one of the supports that's fallen out of favor very heavily as of late, but still going out for the Bloodlust to the Anti-Mage. Most importantly, a really scary combination there. I really wouldn't like to see them go for the Shadow Demon, at least on the side of Mythtrust to combo with the Ogre Magi. It's pretty much two supports that are going to be offering some decent setup. It's a little bit of missed potential that you could be going for something a little bit greedier or a huge burst combination. If they go for it, I think it's either going to be a counter pick to stop Kansai Whips from getting the Shadow Demon up against the Anti-Mage and getting those Mana Burn illusions, or just defensively up against what Kansai Whips are bringing to the table. I can certainly understand that. So what would you prefer to see support wise for Mythras? Would you still prefer a Dazzle or would you go Shadow Shaman? What would be your thoughts? And we get a Beastmaster for Kansai Whips. One yeah. of the more unusual pickups, certainly an unorthodox choice, but Let's see what they can do with it. It's going to give them a lot of hard single target CC for both the Anti-Mage and the Brewmaster. Bursting down those individual heroes is going to be the name of the game for CSW. How they actually lane this Beastmaster is another question entirely, however. There's a lot of different ways you can approach laning this hero. Could be a support and just go into the jungle, use those axes that way. Offlane Beastmaster, mid-tide, um, support tide. There's just a lot of different ways that they could juggle these heroes around. Right now, it's not really safe to assume really anything. We'll have to see who they give the priority to. When I see a Beastmaster in this kind of draft, I would honestly expect them to actually put the Beastmaster mid, since he can stand up versus Brewmaster fairly well. You've already got your Tide for your offlane. Tide's full roll support. It happens rarely, but I just don't feel like it will have the impact necessary in this game. So, really, Ball will be in Myth Trust's court to take control of this game, since Beastmaster... He's a hero that you can rotate and gank fairly easily in the mid. And he's not got the best movement speed. He's relatively squishy. He's not got the best starting strength off the top of my head. I believe he starts it's around mild. 540. I could be wrong. 540 health. Around that ballpark. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. He definitely isn't the greatest of base heroes. The one saving grace that he has in the mid lane position is that he is going to have that Hawk constantly scouting out for him to give him a little bit of extra vision. So maybe he will be able to avoid the ganks that way, but for the most part, he is a pretty easy hero to kill if you actually get the jump onto him. Not incredibly mobile. For, no, you know, no, no, not at all. For Mithras, no. it's going to be an axe. Not exactly what I was expecting, and honestly, very curious as to why pick up the axe now. I'm just trying to think what, what lane this axe is going to be in, because if this is their offlane hero, the axe, then they're running four melee. This is just asking for punishment. I mean, if this was a CIS region team right now, I would be expecting Magnus, considering four melee easy RPs, but there are other ways to punish melee heroes, and I'm wondering what Kadze Whips will do, because kiting them is a very, very effective way of dealing with them. The other is Timbersaw. Now, if Kansai Whips have a strong Timbersaw player, this game could get very unpleasant. But of course, where would you fit a Timbersaw? You'd have yeah. to go with four roll tide in that case. I think that is the bigger question, because right now it does kind of feel like CSW have filled two of their core roles. So punishing it might be a little bit difficult. Myth Trust could just go this incredibly greedy, throw the axe towards the jungle. Offlane Ogre is safely farming AM and mid Brewmaster, and then pick up a support in the last position. Wind Ranger is going to be the next choice for CSW, so it is going to be a decent way to cut around Myth Trust and catch them out of position if they do get clumped up, which inside team fights they very well might be, with blinking anti mages and axe and what have you. Finding those shackle angles might be a little bit easier for them. I quite like this Wind Ranger pick. Let's see if CSW are going to be able to put it to good use. My question to you though is where would you put this Wind Ranger? What lane is it going to be in? Because part of me wants to say mid Wind Ranger would be very strong up against the Brewmaster. The other part of me is saying a support wind ranger is not going to really be that effective. So there yeah. has to be a core of some type, you would think, considering how powerful she is after the buffs to focus fire. So where are you putting her, off lane or mid? Because a safe lane core one farming wind ranger you don't generally see. I would honestly like the safe lane farming core wind ranger more than the support, but I do think that this is going to be a mid wind ranger, throwing either the beastmaster or the tidehunter into a more supporting role, the other one soloing the offlane, and leaving us for a safe lane farmer for the fifth pick for CSW. Hmm. It's an unorthodox draft from Kansai Whoops, but I say it time and time again, 
unorthodox is that line between genius and insanity, and I'm wondering which side of it can't say wisps will fall, can't say whips will fall in this case. One of the big benefits of their draft right now is their flexibility. Right now, Myth Trust, I'm not sure they exactly know how all of these lanes are going to shake down for them. That should work to CSW's benefit. As for Myth Trust, their fifth pick, I'd love to see them pick up some range, but right now they've kind of already locked themselves into that sort of corner where they are very melee heavy inside this entire game. There's not really much that a single pick can do to remedy that fact. The Shadow Demon you were talking about earlier might be good defensively, but I'd like to see Dazzle. Okay, there we go. It is going to be the Dazzle immediately as I come to that thought. So, yeah, definitely a solid pickup for Myth. Part of me just uh, thought this axe can now creep skip quite heavily with a Dazzle and an Ogre. That could be fairly nasty, and it's going to cause all manner of problems for the Council Whips lineup if they do start the aggressive uh, hard lane creep skipping. Definitely. Okay, so somebody just asked inside the chat what the schedule is for the games that we're actually going to be casting on this channel. As far as what's next, we'll have Mineski versus DG, and then Can't Say Whips against, um, <clears throat> excuse me, IMG for the last pick for Can't Say Whips. It is going to be the Slark as we get back in the mindset for this game around, and it's going to be a hero that, honestly, I'm pretty surprised slipped through the cracks. It's going to be a solid fifth pick up for CSW. Mm, the Slark. I, I honestly didn't think they would go with something so early game oriented but then again I look at their draft and think if they don't have early game impact they're going to fall off quite heavily I mean mistrust late game I don't want to fight that I don't know about you but I Definitely don't want to fight not. that but then again I think you might be underestimating a little bit of their late game potential between the pickoffs between Beastmaster with Tidehunter Ravage and the power of that and Slark even though he is very potent come the mid game does scale pretty well. It really depends on which stage of the entire game is concerned, and I think the X Factor is the Wind Ranger for Can't Say Whips, and what they're actually able to accomplish it, and how much farm they're going to give the Wind Ranger. If it's a support position Wind Ranger, not sure if I actually like that at all. I suppose we'll go ahead and introduce our teams. On the right hand side is going to be Can't Say Whips. 2D is going to be playing on that Tidehunter mid lane. Or... Potentially, just as a sport, Godot going to be playing on the Beastmaster, excuse me. Music Guy going to be playing on the Slark, Skyrath Mage by Axe, and Chains on the Wind Ranger. Looks like that is going to be our mid hero. Mm. Of course, on the flip side of the scoring for the Myth Trash lineup, we've got Kanakai on the Ogre Magi. Over on the Dazzle, we have. No, on the Anti Mage, sorry. Bloody purple sets. We've got the Kells. I've not actually seen the Anti Mage set. That, that's, that's a confusing one. It's a... Got... Go on. Yeah, it's a combination of the Witch Hunter set and the Burning set. It's quite a mess. Yeah. Then again, we've got the other purple here. We've got Noki going to be playing the Dazzle. I should have expected it. Noki is Dazzle, hands down. In most of the games I cast, he plays Dazzle. Then again, over into the mid lane, we've got Micro going to be handling that Brewmaster and looking to have all manner of effectiveness, and that does leave Hehe in the off lane. He's going to be playing on the Axe solo up against what CSW bring to the table, and he might be bumping in the fork here as he looks for the contention for the Bounty Rune. He's going to place his ward, which is actually at a very interesting spot. Gives him decent control over the rune, and I doubt it's going to be dewarded, but then again, the support rotations are going to be completely unknown to him. The Dazzle's actually going to swing down here, so it looks like a dual lane setup for Myth, which I think is a pretty darn good call. Let's see who's actually going to scare this Bounty Rune at zero min mark. We might be in for a little bit of a scuffle. I'm hoping so, but I do love how teams are abusing the Roche Pit to just hide their teams while they wait for the uh, Bounty Rune to spawn. But I think this one's going to be quite handedly in Myth's favor, considering they're going to most likely get this bottom one. Then again, that's a four-man rotation. This could be very bad for Hehe. I don't think they're going to be able to catch anyone, though. Musica couldn't get close enough to get a pounce, and there was no shackle available. But Chains will get to the bottom Bounty Rune. Top Bounty Rune goes the way of the anti mage who's brawling with 2D. Ooh, that's an unpleasant one for an anti-mage in the early game. It definitely is. Once Mana Break comes out, he can pretty comfortably do that with the Tide Hunter, just taking away his mana so Anchor Smash isn't on the table, but with level 1 Blink, not something that's at the ready for the AM. So he is going to be forced to eat through some of his Tangos, although lucky enough for him, he's already loaded out with plenty. He is going to have some healing support coming up from the Dazzle through this early game. Looks like it is just going to be a straight-up defensive tri-lane, being that Axe is not going to have a good time at all. As most offlaners do have difficulty with Skyrath Mage, Axe is no exception. The constant Arcane Bolt's harass is going to send Hee Hee... Tootie. Ooh. Yeah, he, he's brawling with the with the Ogre Magi and the anti mate for a moment there. It's, wait a second, this was a little bit hazardous. He doesn't yeah. have any points in the Crappen Shell. He's going to be trying to... Yeah, he's just going to try to soak experience. There's not much else he can do. 
I mean, against these two, he has to risk quite a bit just to come forward. I mean, Kanaka, he, he's just coming forward with that Ignite. And just look at him. He will hands down brawl with 2D right here. And there's very little that can go right for 2D, considering in comes the Kells. And, well, a couple more right clicks could seal his fate. But, unfortunately, he gets back into safety of his tower. Back under his tower as well as flat out of mana, not going to be enough damage coming out from Lakels. At this point in the game, he off the Tide Hunter, but he's going to be completely zoned out. And unfortunately for the Tide, right now he doesn't have the option to do what the Axe is doing, or at least very effectively. He, he is backed off fully into the jungle, so Tide Hunter is going to be reserved. We're just getting experience here and there, but for now it's not a happy time for 2D at the very least. I'd love to see Myth throw one of their sports towards the offlane to soak some experience, but for now they're just going to leave music into 1v0 lanes. We should be more than happy. Hmm. Well, I suppose when it comes to sending offlanes to the jungle, Myth have the edge. The Axe can have a much easier time than the Tide, and all Tide can really do is stack Ancients and look to Anger Smash them down. But he doesn't have the levels in Kraken Shell to really accomplish anything. I mean, he, this is a very sad game to be 2D, basically. Yeah, it really is. After such an abysmal start, you can't expect to get anything out of the lane. You're up against a level 3 anti-mage, and even just 1v1, AM can handle this lane pretty effectively, and then you... Pop in the Over Magi and any further support coming in from the Dazzle. It gets pretty nasty very quickly. As far as our mid lane matchup, Brewmaster versus the Wind Ranger. Pretty much has to be expected, Wind Ranger has a slight edge, mostly just due to range and her ability to spam out the waves, but also not to be unexpected. Brewmaster is still able to get a decent amount out of this lane just by throwing out those thunderclaps every once in a while. Indeed, and I'm sort of keeping an eye on the Kells there because what always interests me is the different builds of anti-mage between teams. I mean, a lot of teams would run the 1-1-1 one, one, one stats stats ultimate kind of build. Gives you a bit more tankability, a bit more early right click, but in this case, for the Kells, he's opting for more points into the mana break to let him just right click and chip away at that uh, tight hunter's mana pool as much as possible. Yeah, I quite like it. I think it's a pretty solid way to go about doing things when you're dealing with the Tide. Since he doesn't have the greatest mana pool to start with, if you just get one or two swings in, he's already going to be very strapped for mana, and at a certain point he's not able to get Anchor Smash off, which is really the only way he has to control up as safely and carry. So I like this choice coming up from the Kells. Hmm, I would be inclined to completely agree with that. And across the, the board, we'll take a quick look at the mid lane. I mean, my pro, he's doing something very similar. He's get, got a very early point up into Drunken Haze. This is going to let him just annoy the hell out of Chains. Chains will hate him for it, but he's still continuing to get some decent CS. And if we take a look at the CS, Anti-Mage top of the board, and regarding the mid lane matchup, slight advantage to Windrunner. So that mischance will start to have some effect, but... If Chains can continue to get a CS advantage, it's going to be all too well in the next fight. But then again, Kanakai could be in some trouble. Do they have the Shackle? Yes, they do. Does catch? Oh, no, does not catch in the end. Kanakai going to have to run, but now in Grote Sihi. But first blood doesn't matter. It goes the way of my pro on the Brewmaster. That seemed that seemed like a very static fight. I'm surprised the, the Tide just managed to stay and just want to face tag that one. Yeah, both teams really felt like they were just comfortable trading blows, and in the end, it's going to be my pro to get the extra edge out of there with the Drunken Brawler crits, and it is going to spell the end of Tide Hunter's life. Only level 1 this Tide Hunter. On even footing, maybe he's able to take that engagement with more points up than Kraken Shell and Anchor Smash, but not when you're dealing with a level 5 hero. That's going to be a very easy first blood for Myth that probably shouldn't have been given to them in the first place. I would be in agreement for that one. I'm I'm honestly surprised that uh, 2D sat and brawled that one as much as possible. He's still level 1! Oh, this is... this. Whenever I look at this Tide, I just keep hearing a small violin playing in the background right now. It's so, so unpleasant. It really is. The smallest violins in the world playing for this tight hunter is he just can't accomplish anything. Down towards bottom, both of the supports, Godot as well as X, have both kind of chilled and done whatever they can actually. Hold that thought is Lakels. He's going to go for a Midas. It's really hard to resist the Midas temptation when you can get it at five minutes in. What are your thoughts on Anti-Mage Midas, though? I think it slows down his battle fear maybe a little too much. I don't know. I, the, consider the level acceleration you get out of a Midas. I do quite like the idea of it from Lakels and five minutes, that's really damn quick. That is really damn quick. Uh, if he can get uncontested farm for maybe up until the 13 minute mark, and if he has components for his battle theory done by then, I'll say it will rapidly have paid off, but still, it will completely now be up to CSW to realize, yeah, that anti-mage needs killing. 
Then again, they're gonna pick up a Midas on their Slark too. This is what happens when you leave Safe Lane Farm is completely unchecked. They're going to farm away and abuse that very heavily. Lakel's with this Midas. It is also going to make up a little bit for the fact that he opted for one more point to Man Break. Although I liked it at the time, it is going to offer you a little bit less <clears throat> tank ability later on. So his extra level is going to be nice. Currently Kinda over, chase down one more auto attack from the Scarth Mage. He's going to be able to secure that kill as he just gets caught out looking for the six minute rune. Yeah, he's got to be very careful of that. And oh, Lakels is actually getting very aggressive, looking for some damage on 2D, it seems. 2D's finally got level 2 at a point in Kraken Shell, but Lakels doesn't particularly care. Lakels level 6 does have two points in mana break. He did opt for a point in stats in the end, so. Well, it's up to CSW to rotate and, as they say, deal with the Lakels as anti mage. Because right now, Lakels is gold. He, he is just completely fine with this kind of matchup and trade. You need at least two people to rotate and kill him. And you need to outright kill him at least two times, really. Because if he just continues to farm away like this, well, I, I really don't want to look at the GPM right now because I'm thinking Lakels is, what, at least 300? Neck and neck with the Slark. Right now they're pretty much trading exactly evenly. You can see the little bit of deviation whenever they have their Midas on cooldown, what have you. But still, it's looking good for both sides. Although, as you kind of already alluded to during the draft, the late game advantage with just a super farmed anti mage is not something that can't say whips can deal with incredibly easily, especially once a BKB comes out for them. They have the war, but their physical damage after the fact, unless Wind Ranger gets completely stacked, is going to be pretty limited during that duration. So we'll have to see how they're going to be able to work this out. Right now we're in for a really passive game start. Up towards top, Godot going to clap and as well as the Fire Blast Ignite, and he'll just give him the rundown. He spawns a boar before falling, but that's all he can do. Going to make the skill score two to one. Yeah, that's just quite the strong showing here for Mithras so far. And I'm looking at the GPM right now, it's 450 for the Anti-Mage with a Midas, which is going to slowly add to that. Musica, however, is highest in the game right now. And we haven't really talked much about Musica's Slark. He has a Midas of his own, he's going for treads, he's starting to look to hunt and kill, which he really needs more before he can do, in my mind. Then again, oh, he may have found Noki. Noki's pinged out, they realize Musica's here. Can they deal with Musica? Or is Musica just going to get the hell out of dodge in this case? Right now, I think bigger item for Myth is going to be a Blink Dagger on Hiki. Even though he saw absolutely no farm inside the offlane and only one creep's worth of experience was sent away very quickly, he's able to find a really easy jungle rotation. Must have just gotten some really lucky farm and lucky creep spawn. So he's going to have that Blink Dagger up in 8 minutes and it's something that you expect from a bat rider but not necessarily from the axe. So let's see where he's going to throw this first gank. He has a smoke as well as Tranquil Boots Blink. Well, the first gank with the blink dagger is the important one, and let's see what he, he can actually acquire from it. Because right now, I should think, hmm, let's go kill that mid lane, deal with the Windrunner, or hunt the Slark. And out of those two options, the Windrunner will be the easier target, especially when you've got Kanakai rotating with you. Definitely. More hate towards the Tidehunter is the supports decide to block his Ancients. So he's going to continue to have a terrible time, but let's keep our eyes on this Axe and Ogre as they rotate towards top. They're going to find the Beastmaster and potentially Chains. Let's see, they might just make the easy jump onto Godot. Blink forward from Lakels, Blink call, and they have the Fire Blast. Shackle is going to latch the trees. Lakels is currently locked in place to bring in 2D, but this is only a level 5 Tide Hunter, no Ravage available. Grave going to be spent very early on to Lakels' go on the sidelines. They're going to find themselves hee hee, and they will be able to leash him down, bring him down with the silence and the arcane bolt and the pounce. When Ranger going to be able to clean up the kill on the Dazzle, and all that they lose in return was that first kill on the Beastmaster. Nice turnaround from CSW, and it may not be over yet with Aestrun on Chains. Currently looking for Lakels, going to be able to get the shackle off, but it doesn't latch onto anything, so Chains going to be able to hold him. Pull back, but Musica, not so lucky. He is going to look for a pounce down to the low ground, not going to be blocked by the Ogre, and he is going to be able to find. A little bit more help from Chains, and for now it's going to be 3-3, our final kill score. Indeed, and I do quite like how the Tide from 2D was played in that case. He doesn't have Ravage, but he came forward aggressively. Oh, Blink Call in mid. Musica, not exactly sure if they can get this kill. They just need a little bit more damage. Fire Blast from the Ogre might be able to secure it as they jump towards mid with the split. Looking towards Chains, they're going through the boulder, throw the Beastmaster up into the air, and now drop him back down. The call, they will be able to shackle Hee Hee, however, and they still haven't been able to focus down anybody with this Bruce Be Brewmaster Ultra. My goodness, chewing over my words, pouncing the sidelines after silencing up on the Kaneki. They'll be able to bring down the Ogre, and now roar into MyPro. MyPro is going to eat the grave. They are going to have a Ravage connecting onto three. Clap going to connect onto two as well. Shackle onto that poor creep over there. Hee Hee dropped down. Music hello, but it's a double kill for X as they bring down yet another one in the form of the Brewmaster Noki as well as Judy going to be able to survive on the sidelines in a disaster for Myth.
a colossal overextension right there, I think is the best way to phrase it. And remember, forget what I said about 2D having a bad early game. He just made up for it right there. That Ravage Absolutely. on three, absolutely gold. And how he was playing on that top lane I was going to mention before that fight started out. He went, came forward threatening like he had it, even though he was level five. He got a good few anchor smashes off. That's probably the best thing he could have done. I mean, it plays mind games, and more than 50% of Dota in the end is mind games. Yeah, really well played in the end. That Ravage was beautiful, even though they had Grave onto one target. wasn't enough to save him. The only saving grace for Meth is that Lakels didn't die throughout all of that and was able to mostly stay out of it and keep on farming. But still, can't say Whips are finding so much more, and this momentum might be enough to ride them through this mid-game. 80 seconds or so till we have the Ravage cooldown, but in the meantime, three-man smoke coming out from Meth with Hihi Noki as well as Kaneki looking for some blood inside the jungle. Let's see if they're going to be able to find it. Godot as well as X are the closest ones, and well, look at that. They have perfect vision over the Scarath Mage if they choose to go for him, or maybe they back off for the Tide Hunter. Let's see how this goes down. I should think if they're going to return anyone, it'll be 2D. I mean, there's the blink, there's the call. This is pretty much a dead Tide Hunter, especially if they get the cull. Yeah, Easy dunks cool. for Hehe. He. Easy dunks. Yeah, not much else that you can do there. Poor Tide Hunter. But it isn't really going to harm his effectiveness that much, although he'd love to be saving up towards the blink dagger right now. Mid lane, my pro not in a good way. Long range pounce music lands it. And with the Ancient Seal, there's nothing the Brewmaster can do. Uh, counter kill by uh, can't say whips and. Well, this game's going to be brawl heavy in my mind. You on one side have a slark, on the other you have an axe. We're going to be looking for fights early game no matter what, and in comes the first bit of tower pressure of this game. And it's going to be applied by CSW as they look towards this tier 1 tower in mid. They'll chip away it with chains and company. They have all forces here. The anti-mage isn't going to be <clears throat> involved in this fight, and it looks like neither is the Tidehunter, at least for now. Though he has a TP and a Ravage at the ready, just 8 seconds or so on cooldown until he has that up. But CSW are going to pull out, although at the drop of a hat they can look for initiation as Muska, as well as X look for a wraparound. If they can land this on Tahi, that will be a very unpleasant turn of events here for Myth Trust. but Noki and Kanakai are ready and they're going to pop their smoke. They want to get something and it's immediately revealed by Godot. Are they going to really go on to this uh, Beastmaster? Yeah, they are. This is going to be quite unpleasant because in comes Musica. He misses the pounce, but the shackle will land from chains. So at the, it might be a one for one, but Kanakai gets the Shallow Grave on him, so that's going to buy him some time. The Mystic Flare does drop Dean. Good damage to Micro, but the axe will still fall. And now this turnaround power from CSW is just so large. Then again, in comes the Primal Split. That brings down one. Can it get two? Yes, it can. And now they're looking to bring down the Slark. Slark falls, and now it's just the Tide Hunter still sat in this mid lane. Chains is far back, and if 2D falls, this is going to be so much value for Myth Trust. Definitely. Shackle going to latch onto both the Dazzle and Anoki, but Kel's going to drop the ultimate. That's going to secure the kill onto the Tide Hunter. It's going to be Myth finding a big bone thrown to them by CSW as. It's going to be their turn to potentially make a bad fight happen. The Ravage hits four, and usually that's pretty much a guaranteed one fight, but nobody was really in position to immediately follow up on that, even though they had the Mystic Flare. Grave coming out from the Dazzle delayed it enough to where CSW take a pretty poor engagement. That Dazzle dying, even through his ultimate and what have you, just not able to survive. Missing that first pounce really felt like it was pretty crucial for them. Yeah, completely. They needed that pounce to land. That pounce does so much. It's not just the damage, it's the control it brings. And uh, that burst of gold for Mythrust, uh, let, let's just take a quick look at what's going on. Oh, as we hold that. Never as we mind. See X. Hold that thought. He is Musica. going to be jumped up top with call in from the axe. They are going to be able to dunk down Musica, but he gets off the ultimate. Now he's going to be able to run a little bit. Missed timing coming out from Hee Hee. Battle Fury was delivered to Lakels, and it's still a nice pickup, but unfortunate they're not able to get the bigger fish. Yeah, literally the bigger fish you'd think, but now in comes the counter initiation. Music are going to evaporate the anti mage of Lakels, but now in comes the counter initiation. The dunks are falling. He, he will still take a fall, however, to chains, and now they're going to try to chase down chains. Chains is doing fairly well for himself as well, considering he's not got a wind run available. Are they going to turn on this one? That's a nice shackle shot. In comes a TP in. This is going to be the Skyrath Mage. If they can get my pro, that'll be absolutely perfect for them, but no, the Shallow Grave's going to buy the Brewmaster more than enough time, and now they're going to bring down Kanaka, uh, Kanakai or at least attempt to in exchange, but the healing from Noki is going to buy him enough time and he's actually going to walk away from this one, or at least he may. I mean, we do still have that Windrunner power shot's going to fly through. It does clip, but it still is not enough. The Ogre still stands, at least for a moment longer. 
Noki, my goodness, the MVP in those last couple of engagements, the healing power coming up from the Distazzle and really slick timed Shallow Graves have really been the saving grace for Myth in more ways than one. 11 to 11, it has been an absolute slugfest for both sides, but in Myth, looking for the plank, the slugfest doesn't end here as he, he is going to be pounced down. He gets called into Musica, but is it going to be enough to save his life? It looks like it is. Now Mind Pro blinking forward for the clap, split onto Musica, but a leap down to the low ground means that he can't pursue very easily. He's going to drop the boulder toss, Anchor Smash attempted by the Tide Dender, going to be stymied by the Cyclone. They continue forward, but Musica has another pounce, so he might just be able to settle for 2D. He has a Ravage in the Turpentine potential is there, and these Brulings just don't do any damage after the Anchor Smash has been applied, so looks like Tide Hunter is also going to be walking out, split completely useless, or more or less useless. Yeah, that's uh, not your ideal primal split, but what is really the next point of interest, do you think? CSW, are they going to threaten this mid tower? They do have that kind of presence on the map, then again, smoke in their jungle. Did, was this revealed by an enemy ward? Yes, it was! Oh, they saw this one! This ward caught it! I can't actually draw on a map, can I, in uh, this mode? No, I can't. But yeah, uh, this could be quite the slobber knock here. Smoke or not, it is going to break out as they find themselves the ogre. The shackle isn't going to latch. Power shot flies through. They are going to get the grave to buy a little bit more time for this ogre, but he still should fall. Just one more two right clicks, and the tide hunter anchor smash is going to be enough. Is on the sidelines. Miska going to jump in for Noki. They lose the courier as well. That is going to be the Radiance Courier falling, so still sending out to Musica even after they're diving a Tier 2 tower, probably not advised, I must say. It's going to be 2-0 for CSW, although they do lose their Courier. Indeed, and now, well, Tier 1 is at least going to give something in exchange, but what do you really think is going to be the next big item for CSW at this point? I mean, for Tide, he's almost got his Blink Dagger. Do you think that's going to be enough to tip the favor for CSW? Maybe, just maybe. Honestly, I think that if they used all of their ultimates at the same time, CSW would probably have a slight fighting advantage if all five of them are able to find the engage, but right now Myth have been more or less skirting around the outskirts. Whenever they find a good initiation with the axe, they can uh, get the jump and look for those kills, but yeah, it does kind of feel like they're going to run into an issue where they're not going to be able to really put major tower pressure. The focus fire from the Wind Ranger is kind of nice, for tower damage, but not nice enough it seems. The Anti-Mage continues to farm away, Battle Fury up with his Vladimir's offering as well being delivered out to his courier Midas all the time ticking away, currently 2,000 net worth ahead of where the enemy Slark is. Yeah, I gotta admit it is quite the level of fun that Lakels is securing for himself, and if he can get that Manta online in a few minutes time, that will be insane, considering Midas and Battle Fury, you should think he'll have one hell of a level and gold acceleration. Yeah, and speaking of that, currently the top hero level inside this game, and even though Sark has been sitting on that Midas, just hasn't really been able to keep up with him since Musica has been spending most of this game looking for kills and smoked up with his team. And although that's not a bad way to play it, it's probably not ideal. He, he is going to mop up <clears throat> one of the Hawks from the Beastmaster as he finds it over in the sidelines. But yeah, Zinso's ganks haven't been working out 100% for Musica, and he's died a couple of times, and I'm able to keep up in the farm. Indeed, and... I'm, I'm sort of wondering what items we're going to see come up for the rest of the lineup. Because my pro, he had a while back about 2,600 gold. He's picked himself up an ogre club. Hmm. I'm wondering what else he's going to build to. Is this going to be a BKB or an Aghanims, you think? Really feels like a BKB. Up against the Skyroth Mage as well as the Titan Hunter. I think the Aghanim Scepter would be incredibly greedy. Getting off that ultimate is not very easy this game at all. No, it isn't. I, I suppose BKB would give you complete security in that, and well, if my pro can get himself a BKB, that is going to be quite favorable. And But, flip side of the coin, we've now got Blink Dagger available for chain, so he's going to look for the best positional, uh, positioning possible, as I trip up on my words, for getting that shackle. So, they're going to get the tier 1 or to a trap, or at least attempt to, in exchange for Roshan going the way of Lakels, and just look how quickly Roshan melts. Yeah. It's not that they have any minus armor, it's just the raw amount of heroes they have in the pit, and Roshan's able to do nothing with the weave, plus armor as well, as that Vladimir is offering to sustain them. They are going to trade the tier 1 tower up towards top, but more than happy to take that exchange as myths. This is going to secure Lakel's very safe farm throughout the next couple minutes of this game, with the Aegis on his person as well as the potential for them to pressure the enemy towers. So they are going to get that gold one way or another, and it looks like the tier 1 tower and bottom is going to be traded out. 241 HP should be a very easy push for them. 
But yeah, but then again, take a look at this. Incoming from the sidelines, you have the rest of the uh, CSW lineup, and they do have that Ravage ready to go. I think we're about to see our first 5v5 brawl of the game. Well, let's see how this is going to break down for now. It's going to be Myth exercising a little bit of caution here. They have no vision over the enemy, and they are just going to pull back. They'll let their anti-mage farm. Throughout all of this, they're being entirely scattered up by the Hawks coming out from the Beastmaster. It's usually not something you're able to see very much, the immediate impact of the Hawks. But this time, it was pretty useful. Immediate smoke coming out from them as they look to find the fight on their own terms, and it should be a pretty big one. Yeah, the thing is, if they just caught that ball getting uh, getting blocked, they could be wise to this, but no, they're not. In comes the weaved team with the taunt onto chains. They're going to start off, but the Ravage is there on five. That is one hell of a Ravage. Noki going to be first to fall at this rate. Will go down while silence. They lose two. They lose the Ogre as well. Now they're going to try to get the counter kill onto 2D. The taunt is there. Can they get the call? No, they can't. And the Mystic Flow will instead kill the Axe. That's three for nothing. Can they get the full white Lakels? Just looking for anything he can, but a blink away by the Windrunner is going to buy more than enough time. And now my Pro going to be the victim just gets completely annihilated. It's a four for nothing. It's a complete nightmare for the Myth Trust. Not what I was expecting at all after that wrap round. They find themselves a pretty easy win range to pick up, but my goodness, that Ravage coming up from 2D time and time again. He's been delivering on this side hunter, even though he had a subpar laning stage. This is really what separates the good off laners from the great ones. Tide hunters have a pretty darn great game with a five man Ravage. Wonderful turnaround from them, and Antimage just wasn't able to accomplish anything. Neither was the Brewmaster for that matter. Kited around constantly, the Anchor Smash stopping a lot of the damage coming out from the Brew, and CSW with a huge victory that really should have been theirs. It just all came off the back of that tie. 2D, man, 2D. He's impressing me. He had such a bad early game to this. He's currently, oh, let's take a look on net worth. About 6,000, but he has his blink dagger. He's got a gem. He's now going for a four staff. He's got his important items. He Anything really from now is just extra gold and bonus for 2D. Yeah. It's really not the money that... Tells you the impact of this hero. I think more than anything, the average hero's hit by Ravage is probably a better indicator. It's at least four, which is incredible. Yeah, I mean, just positioning like that, it, it's just absolutely perfect. And he, he just cannot get anything. He was looking for dunks in that last fight, but he just didn't get a single opportunity. In fact, he got Mystic Flared to death. Yeah. The CSW lineup are completely on the ball in this game. Sure, it's 17-11, they've had a good few deaths, but they are on the ball, and now it seems we're going to be seeing another push come out of Mythtrust. Do we have a Ravage? Not for 25 seconds. So, how can CSW hold this one, or are they going to concede the Tier 1? I think it's probably a pretty safe move to concede the Tier 1, since you don't have the Ravage. But at the very least, they're going to delay. Lakel still has the Aegis too, so it's probably just going to be this Tier 1 tower given the way. Although they jump in, Anchor Smash on the Lakels, he'll blink out to safety. He has plenty of backup in reserve. He's probably more than okay with taking some of this damage since he does have the Aegis as so on the sidelines. They find my pro with the roar. They'll be able to bring down the Brewmaster before he gets up his ultimate. Now things are starting to come off of the rails. They are going to get the Ravage. This one only connects on the one. They gush on to the Dazzle up further on the fight as they focus down Kaneki. They'll be able to bring down the Ogre as they look for more. Grave TP going to keep the Dazzle safe as he's healing up inside the base. Still two for nil as CSW find a okay fight for them, especially considering they're fighting up against an Aegis on the AM. And that Aegis is going to be timing out in about 40 seconds or so. I gotta say, that roar coming onto the Brewmaster completely disabling the Primal Split. I, that is that is just one hell of a thing to see. But Mythtrust can still fight back into this one. This game is by no means over. And especially if they can get that Anti-Mage just split pushing and being the pest and rat that he can be. I reckon that uh, Mythtrust may still take this late game. They certainly have the better late game in my mind. I mean, no one wants to fight up against a farmed anti-mage, but early game, the favor is in CSW's side. So let's see what Lakels can really do to help this one stay open for Mythtrust, for lack of a better word. I mean, we've got that Manta flying out now for Lakels, which will do a lot. It will turn that Scarif Mage into a walking bomb. So... That might be their first order of business there. Focus the Skyrath, blow him up before he can Mystic Flare, or after, so he burns a bit more mana, and then just try to bring him down in the middle of the team. Could work, it'll all depend on the positioning of the CSW lineup, but what else can the Kells do here, really? He can try to get on top of the Tides, burn enough mana so he can't Ravage, but Ravage is a very, very quick cast. 
So mm, thought of that one. Maybe go for a BKB so he's immune to the Ravage. Could be another order of business here. There are options for the Mithras lineup. They are by no means dead in the water. Oh, definitely not. I don't think anybody's really fooled into thinking that. Although the last couple of fights have really gone well for CSW. They still have an anti-mage that's 3,000 net worth higher than anybody else inside of CSW, and he finds himself 2D. This time around, he's going to obliterate him with that Manta style. Freshly Forget what off. I said. Forget what I said about it. it'll take too long to burn his manas before Ravage is cast. That was too quick. No. Ignore everything I said for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> Even if he had the Ravage there, yeah, getting off is really darn difficult, and although it is sometimes easy to forget how much burst damage an anti-mage can pump out once you get the Battle Fury Manta style up, it starts to get into the realm of insane. The Slark should be able to press his panic button of his ultimate, but if he's also not careful, might be trained of mana before that, we'll just have to see. Speaking of CSW's items, we now have that completed Scotty up for the Slark. <laughs> I like the pickup of Scardy. Mathematically, it's going to be really good against the AM. It'll stop the number of attacks you can get, which will stop the rapid mana burn, or at least attempt to, considering illusions. But it seems we're going to get a smoke from CSW, from Extinct, as well as Godot, so I wonder what they're going to go hunting for. Yeah, we'll just have to see. Right now, there's actually nothing at the ready. They're going to drop the Hawk and potentially look for something inside the enemy jungle, but I don't think this is going to bear any fruits. It's currently Myth or all inside the bottom lane, with the kills farming up the Ancients with a little help from the Ogre, and everybody else is just in the lane proper. They're going to invade the enemy jungle as their jungle is also being invaded, although they don't have intel over this. No, they don't, and they do need some defense wards in the jungle, especially if the threat from their top tier 2 is going to become an issue, but it seems like invasion into the enemy jungle is the order of business from both teams, my pro, he, he as well as the Kells. They want to hunt and kill. And I think this Tidehunter could be the victim again, 2D. Oh, it's going to be an unpleasant day to be a Tidehunter. He gets called, he gets cast, and well, there's just no way out of this one. No. The dunk is going to unfortunately miss for Kihi, so that's going to be on cooldown, but outside of that, everything goes pretty smoothly for them. He could have cast the Ravage, but it would have been a really bad one at that, so he's going to decide against it. Tier 2 tower down towards bottom, going to be taken by Myth, whereas their Tier 2 tower in their safe lane is going to be pressured by CSW. The real difference is that they get a tight under pickup on top of it and are already there, so they'll be able to defend on top of it all. Musica probably needs to fall back pretty darn soon. The Axe going to be spotted out with some TP support, pounce away is going to keep the Slark safe. Indeed, and honestly, I am wondering why CSW decided to allow that kind of trade to go on, since when it comes to tower pushing, the advantage is there for Myth. I mean, they have a better tower pushing lineup, ultimately. What can really bring down towers rapidly on CSW's lineup? Only the Windrunner, and does Windrunner really want to risk using Focus Fire when a fight can break out at any point? Focus Fire is such a good anti-hero spell these days. Definitely. They do have the aura from the Beastmaster with two points into that, as well as the Focus Fire that you alluded to, but Bloodlusted Anti-Mage with Manta Style probably wins out in that exchange. They're going to take this Roshan for Myth again, but this time around, CSW have potential to look for contention. They are going to ping this out, and we could be in for a really big fight. Yeah, we are, and the convergence is there coming from ZSW. They want to try to get this one. Power Shot's going to scout the pit, but are they going to get Roshan in time? The Tidehunter managed to get that full Ravager off, but anti -Mage picks up the Aegis in time. Musica, he's going to be the target here, but here comes the Primal Split. They're going to bring down 2D after the Ravager's cast, so not the ideal target to primary, but still, now comes the chase. Go Dot's going to be the next potential victim here. He will roar out Lakels, but does eat a boulder for his efforts. Now comes the turnaround, though. Musica going to come in and drop the Mystic Flare in combination with Extinct, and burn down the Axe and Dazzle, but now looking for more. Can he get Kanakai? I don't think so, not with Micro there as well, and now the Kel's coming in. However, Focus Fire from Chains, looking to do some work. They bring down the first life of that Anti-Mage. Second life, gonna be up in a few seconds time, but apparently the Musica will finish that Ogre. Now they're gonna bring down the Kel's. If they can finish him off, that'll be perfect. He's going to Manta, try to escape this one, manages to kill off the Slime and Blink away, but no, Blink right on his heels there from Chains, and one more Power Shot will clean it up. Dominating Spree for Chains, and well, I believe at the end of the fight, that's three for three? Yeah, it was <laughs> bloodbath from either side. Unfortunately, it actually doesn't show the beginning of that fight for either side. In fact, it looks like CSW only lost the Tidehunter and the Slark, which is quite honestly incredible. They take off the Aegis as well as kill off the Anti-Mage proper, so that's, all things considered, a really good fight for them. 
Although the AM is still farmed as all hell, it doesn't really matter since they aren't able to actually transition that into teamfight wins. Slark going to town in the back lines as they go for a really risky chase onto the Beastmaster. It doesn't actually net them anything. Godot with that roar, they're able to turn that around for a handful of kills. Yeah, quite the show of force there of CSW showing. They can still fight the Anti-Mage. The Anti-Mage isn't as scary as he can be yet, though. I mean, you consider he can still go for a heart, he could get a, uh, a, a Bissell Blade. This this is going to get oh so much scarier, certainly. But I do see more items. I believe I just saw a sheep stick be purchased. Yeah, that is going to be up for chains. As if this Wind Ranger wasn't scary enough already. The Shackles haven't been the greatest, but just the raw positioning from Chains, landing power shots here and there, and the focus of our damage with that Maelstrom has been pretty darn immense, so Chains being very scary is going to be jumped by Hee Hee, however, they're going to roar the axe in return, axes fly, but with the wind run, Chains going to buy a little bit more distance, four staff play is also going to be there, blinking for the clap, Anti-Mage going to try to assassinate Chains, although he's going to be hexed up as well as Shackled Down, the dunk is going to put an end to Wind Ranger's life as they pursue to the Beastmaster, it's going to be a clean 2-0 for Myth. Yep, exactly. <laughs> complete turn of the tables, really, Mithra, showing that they are not out of it either. We're in for a very close game, I believe. I probably want to check the graphs just to see how close this actually is. Net worth, zero difference, effectively. And experience, nearly the same. Wow, I did not expect it to be quite that close. I expected the Anti-Mage to have at least a bit of advantage um, in terms of their team's net worth, to, keep the, to be at the zero marker though, considering the Kells has a Battle Fury and a Midas, that just shows how well CSW can really fight. And the net worth, the net worth chart for the heroes does show a good amount as well. But then again, oh. Extinct get caught out by Hee Hee, Dunk will be there and they'll lose the Skyrath Mage within the base. Yeah, it's going to be pretty easy to pick off for Myth, as they're the ones to push up high ground. The big difference is farm distribution, and these last couple of fights have been in the favor of Myth, and Lakels is actually able to put that farm to use. Melee Barracks going in their favor, as CSW just aren't going to fight this one. It's at a hefty cost. They didn't have buyback on the Wind Rangers, so Myth, they find two pickoffs and are immediately able to transition out some significant tower damage. If they can continue that kind of pressure, though, that's going to be absolutely perfect, considering they managed to get a Rax as well, and the melee Rax of all things. Quite the nice show of force there for Mythrust, but still, CSW are now all up near enough the Skyrath in 10 seconds. They've got their Ravage. They are ready to fight once again, and 2D can do the work. We've seen him land those big five-man Ravages, and if he can do the same again, well, I think we are in for one hell of a show. Definitely, it's... Still very risky for them right now. This anti-mage is completely stacked. He opts not to go for the BKB, and I'm not the biggest fans of this choice, but right now his attack speed is through the roof. At 413 and 0.37 seconds per attack, he's able to cleave through pretty much everything. I'd really love to see him go for a basher, although I think BKB as next item is probably the better choice. Yeah, BKB I think is going to be necessary. Being In this game, BKBs for both sides are quite nice. Maybe less so for CSW than Myth, but being able to dodge the Fire Blast, the Thunderclap, the control that the Brewmaster can bring, I still think it's quite important. Definitely. Music got banned fights from anti mage illusions, and if it weren't for some Arcane Boots, is almost completely out of mana after that. Although he is able to heal through this, it still shows the power of the AM. Currently, the rest of his team smoked around as they find a jump in towards mid onto Godot, going to obliterate the Beastmaster. And it seems it's going to be just an easy Rax after that. There's not really much to say. The, Bre the Beastmaster just dropped too quickly, and we did discuss the weaknesses of Brewmaster in the draft, so. Uh, that's about what we can expect, but now we get the rotation to that bottom lane from the Myth Trust. They want to try to shred another tower and they get another line of racks, but do we have the defense there from CSW? Yes, we do. They are ready with that Blink Ravage, and if they can land that Ravage, it'll be absolutely perfect. But the Blink Dagger gets disabled by that, and however, a Shackle on 2 is going to be more than enough. Full stuff forward from 2D. He's looking for the Ravage, but BKB up on Hee as well as the Taunt. It's going to buy him enough time. Musica trying to hunt forward, looking for Hee as well. And in the base, well, Tornado was on Extinct, but now Lakels comes in. He wants to finish this. He wants to just kill everything. However, Roar onto the Anti-Mage. They're trying to buy enough time for the Anti-Mages to do so work. Now in comes the Ravage, however. Ravage does land on two. BKB up on Micro, though, is going to render him immune, but Lakels does not care. He's just going to keep hacking, slashing, and chopping. He gets himself the Tide Hunter. They get the Wind Runner. Are they going to go for the tower? No, they're going to finish off the entire team. Musico falls. It's a four for zero. Triple kill for Lakels, and GG is called for game number one. Myth what? take it. 
end to that game after being so darn close. Look at that graph, that's incredible. Five minutes ago was pretty much exactly even, and then it's just a downward slope myth. They find one big team fight win, snowball that towards a really impressive victory, and those last couple fights really showed their strength. So well played to both sides, we are going to be back with game number two up soon here on Heflet TV, so don't go anywhere, it is going to be back up and running.